Hi, everyone. So I, both me and the room are decorated for Christmas because I'm going to read an entry from Christmas Eve. And I'm decorated in gifts from students, old gifts from an earlier time from students and what I'm drinking out of. So, you know, I, I entered education, the university system at a or not that long ago, but at an earlier age when, I mean, it was like 10 o'clock at night, I would walk by the lab or the classroom. And it was every night of the week that it was filled with students and they're debating enzymatic function. They're, they're writing out interactions on a whiteboard. They, 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 I have gifts from this too, but they would make drinking games out of mTOR signaling this, this like anabolic enzymatic uh, cascade. You know, if you miss a phosphate, you take a drink, it's those sorts of games. And there wasn't even a test coming up. I mean, this was just, this was what people did for fun, I don't know, six, seven years ago or something like that. Times change and that's okay. But these are relics from an earlier age, from that generation uh, that I am, that are accompanying me into this reading. And what I'm going to read is, is a relic of a kind, right? This is a, this is an old entry from Christmas Eve. Number 14, Friday, Christmas Eve, 2021, attention spans. Hi, everyone. In my last journal, I wrote about the jumpy focus of modern fantasy as I perceive it. I suspect it's a consequence of competition. Distractions abound. A thousand other entertainments are jumping up and down, making a ruckus. Hey, you, over here, look at me, give me a dollar they holler in our direction. To earn a reader's attention amid all of that commotion, authors have begun to leap up and down and shout too. Huger villains, higher stakes, hastier pacing, action on every page. If I were younger, those spectacular gymnastics might excite me, but today they just wear me out. I prefer a subtler seduction of my attention. Questions but only those that arouse genuine curiosity. In my early 20s, I wrote a book, Morning Salty Shimstick, that's what I called it. There were two chapters, three and four. I often know chapter three began and was followed by pages of nonsensical statements. Then came chapter four, I wonder, ask. It began followed by thousands of nonsensical questions. I never made the book available anywhere, but for the last seven years, I have reproduced many of its questions on my college exams like this. Last chance for extra credit, circle the question that wasn't in your review slides. Does cable date of maturity pupil raising her hand? What apparatus election officer honeydew melon? How is puffed sleeve collapsible waistband electric head shears? What steps to the public lavatory bouncing ball brine tractor? Is your padding pool spherical piston woofer? Four of the five questions appeared in the pre-exam study materials. Approximately 20% of the students answered correctly, which means everyone guessed, which means everyone ignored that section, which means the presence of a question mark isn't sufficient to capture anyone's attention. My conclusion, intelligibility is necessary to arouse curiosity. But that's not the only criterion. Consider, what the heck did I do with my spoon? If I hear a student mumble that in the dining hall, I don't get swept up in the mystery. My conclusion, the missing answer has to actually fascinate the audience. It doesn't have to be phrased as a question. Consider, I wish they made cough drops for hands. A hairless girl in the hospital gown whispers. They do, whispers her nurse. Okay, I'm captivated by the implied question. Like, what are they? And why are they needed? And how do they work? If I hold multiple mysteries at once, that seems to compound my interest. Consider, is it possible for rainbows to have bad breath? A child asks from the back seat. Oh, why do you ask? Her mother responds with a tremor in her tone. Now two riddles need solving, and I'm attentive until they've been solved. 
without any need for villains and action, no shouting or leaping, no ruckus at all. That's much more exciting to me than a bunch of hasty high stakes hollering. So I'll leave you with one last question. If rubble luncheon doesn't groundwater girth snaffle, yet for squadron cutlery chest. And of course, I hope you have a Merry Christmas Eve. Me. And all these months later, I hope your Christmas Eve is still uh, giving you some sort of satisfaction as you reflect back on it nostalgically. <laughs>